from opposite worlds. Adam and Eden are teenagers in love. But when border agents catch them, the two are forced apart. Years later, Adam tries to reunite with his lost love in Upside Down. Hello, I'm Liz. I'm Kevin. And I'm Aaron. And today we're here to talk about Upside Down, the new film starring Jim Sturgis and Kirsten Dunst. We've all just seen it. Liz, I demand that you start. <laughs> All right, it is visually innovative. It is a beautiful film. The whole point of this film is that it's these star-crossed lovers who live in worlds with opposing gravitational forces. And so this filmmaker, Juan Solanas, really went the whole nine yards and showed and created two amazing worlds. But when it comes to the story, it feels stilted and fairy tale like and and very one dimensional and that was bothersome to me. But well, it is a fairy tale. Yeah. There's but nothing it could wrong still with have like tales. decent dialogue and story structure. Well, and, you don't know what that planet's like, sorry. But you don't know <laughs> you don't know what that planet's like. They might talk like that on that planet. It's not our planet. But the important thing to remember about this whole idea is that it came to our writer director Juan Solanas in a dream. He saw the visual image of a man on a mountaintop looking up and seeing a woman upside down on another mountaintop, and that stuck with him. And so it's based off of an image. It, it can't be the strongest script in the world if it's a if it came from a visual. David Lynch constantly bases his films off Let's of dreams and David stream Lynch. of consciousness, and his dialogue is natural, and he has really bizarre, captivating scripts. But comparing David Lynch to Juan Salas <laughs> is not a an Juan equal Salatis comparison. Juan won well, he what he won the jury prize at Cannes for his student short. He is he has the pedigree, and is he's the son of Fernando Salinas, which who's a famous Argentinian filmmaker. So he has the pedigree to go on and become a very good filmmaker. But look at this movie. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. It's, and it's I don't, visually beautiful. It's visually beautiful, but I also, if you base it on a dream, but yet he then took it and created these two incredible worlds. Even when I thought he was breaking the rules, he wasn't. That's the end of it. I mean, the script really is the biggest problem. I will agree yes. with you there. But the movie's not about... A story. It's about spectacle and emotion, and I, I forgave the script problems for that because it's one of the more unique concepts that I've seen in years. <laughs> you should never forgive script problems. I usually don't, but I got sucked into it. Story it's is like what Titanic. the film is all about. Oh, Titanic. Titanic had a decent script. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that script was strong. But here's the thing: one. that was a very simple. There is nothing to that script, and this is the same thing. It's two people who meet, who fall in love, and want to be together. That's it, and that's all it should be. And then they're thrown into this world that they have to navigate in order to be together. That's the only thing you well, need to know. Okay, let me just say, I do agree with you guys. Visually, this film is stunning. It is gorgeous and innovative, and novel, and I don't know many other words I could use to describe how great it is. But I had problems with story. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I have to say. <laughs> now that we're done with Liz Jim. Uh, Jim Sturgis is the main character of Adam, and he's very endearing. He's very believable. Sometimes he overacts a little bit. I think that his voiceover in the beginning was a little too exaggerated. I'll agree with that. And Kirsten Dunst, who plays Eden, also does a wonderful job. I had an accident when I was a teenager. Uh, everything before that is gone. Sometimes things come back to me in dreams, but I'm never sure if they're real or if I'm making them up. Jim Sturgis as Adam plays a very happy-go-lucky character, and it's a little irritating and abrasive at times, but when he suffers at the emotionally low point of the script, you really feel for him. I think that's incredibly effective. And on the other side of the coin, Kirsten Dunst plays Eden, and she's so lovely, and she's so natural with the very stilted dialogue, and you could see why he's obsessed with her. This is Kirsten Dunst and Jim Sturgis's movie all the way. And their connection and their chemistry is what really sold this for me. Where have you been? I've been waiting ages for you. Our neighbors got robbed. They're saying it was a thief from down below. There's hunters with guns and border patrol trucks. Are you serious? Don't make that face. I made it here, right? As long as you're okay. Juan Solanas directed the film. The script problems aside, and I'm not denying that there are some, he brought a vision that we have not seen. We've never seen this world before, created so particularly and specifically that I was just kind of floored by him, and I've kind of been wondering, where has this guy been? Yeah, I agree. I think the world is really the strength of this film, and there don't seem to be very many directorial mishaps at all. I really think that he used every aspect of filmmaking 
to support his vision. And I know you agree in certain things, like they have eye lines that match when people are upside down and, mm -hmm. and not, and it's just, it's so fascinating. He stuck to his guns and he made something unique. As a director, I think he shepherded this world very effectively. Visually, technically, he's very dynamic. He's wonderful. But then when he's the originator of the story and he's the writer, there's something very formal and stilted about the performances, and those come from script problems. It was almost as if someone wrote it in another language and translated it into English. He probably did write and it in another he, language. They talk about him on set, you know, in the press packet, they talk about Juan Solanas and how he's not a very good English speaker. But Kirsten Dunst was very natural, as you said. So. I think she brought that to it. I think she forced her naturalism onto the dialogue. But I think they all uh, they all did that. I didn't mm -hmm. really find it that formal, except for the beginning, yeah. during yeah. the voiceover, because I thought he was giving some sort of weird speech or something. I'm like, oh, we'll find out what this is, and then we don't find out. It anything. was just so cool, Liz. Come on. <laughs> I know. It's, it was so unique that it deserves attention, absolutely. Despite the ending, this is a gorgeously realized film. It's very compelling, and I think everybody should see it on the big screen. I say see it. Unique visions should be rewarded. However, I found myself rolling my eyes throughout the majority of this film. I say stream it. Upside Down is not a perfect film, but there are enough unique elements to make it fresh and visually spectacular, so I say see it. Well, it looks like our votes add up to two and a half tickets, which is a see it for Upside Down. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Victory. Yeah, for getting it right. There were just too many plot holes. I didn't buy it. I think it's perfectly logical. You would. Would you just get down from there?